I thought this was the coolest piece of tech I'd ever seen. And then this happened. Disclaimer, this isn't a sponsored review and I'm not affiliated with Seek Thermal in any way. I've bought several of Seek Thermal's products over the last few years and the Reveal Pro in this review is an early release unit that I borrowed and have to return. Exactly a year ago, I reviewed the original Seek Thermal Reveal and I was impressed. At the time, there was nothing else in the market that put that kind of thermal power in the palm of your hand at a widely accessible price. Granted, the resolution was somewhat limited and the frame rate wasn't quite what you'd call fluid, but if you wanted anything smoother or sharper, you had to spend thousands. A lot can happen in a year, and to say that the people over at Seek have been busy, well that would be an understatement. This is the Reveal Pro, a pocket-sized thermal imaging camera with a resolution and feature set unmatched by anything else at this price, or even twice this price. And that makes this thing pretty special. It's compact, rugged, curved for a comfortable grip, and has a built-in 300 lumen flashlight that's surprisingly useful to have on a thermal camera. The body is made of a tough plastic with a carbon fiber effect, and the display is protected with Gorilla Glass. The thermal sensor and lens are deeply recessed into a metal alloy housing for protection, and the sides of the unit are rubberized for grip. So what's new with the Pro that you don't get with the original reveal? The first thing you'll notice is the resolution. On paper, going from 206 by 156 to 320 by 240 may sound like a modest jump up in resolution, but in practice the difference is night and day. To put it differently, the old sensor had just over 32,000 pixels, this one has almost 77,000 pixels. The difference that makes in image quality is incredible. On the left is the old model and on the right is the new Pro. The improvement is huge. The next most important difference is the frame rate. Seek used a technology they call fast frame, which gives a much faster and smoother image. The difference is about as dramatic and useful as the hike in resolution, if not more so. Because now you get a much clearer picture when you're dealing with moving targets, or if you happen to be moving yourself. The device boots up and powers down a bit slower than before, but aside from that, everything else it does is faster and more snappy. Capturing a photo used to take about 2 seconds, now it's instant. You can fire off quick successive snaps without the screen freezing up and missing the action. And instead of storing the images on that fiddly micro SD card that you needed tweezers to remove, the images now go straight into internal memory. With 4GB built in, you get over 13,000 images, and uploading them is done via micro USB. Another new feature is digital zoom. If you want to get a closer look at a distant subject, you can zoom in up to four times in increments of 0.1. And while I appreciate being offered this level of precision and control, in practice it just feels like a lot of work to get to the zoom level I want. I think just four zoom increments would be a better way to go. Like a simple 1, 2, 3, 4 would be a whole lot faster. The Pro offers three modes of operation, normal, full frame and span and level. Normal is the most simple and gives the fastest, smoothest frame rate. Full frame mode is slower but it captures more thermal detail and will be more useful for professionals who need more precise data for thermal inspections. It also gives you a temperature range across the top so you know the lowest and the highest temperatures in any given scene. The span and level mode is similar but also offers something quite sophisticated. It lets you display areas of interest while filtering out everything else. So, say you're looking at an electrical system and you want to see only objects that are hotter than a certain temperature. You dial in the temperature you want at the bottom of the screen and you'll only see objects that are hotter than that temperature. That's going to be really useful for some people. Another big upgrade is that the emissivity can now be adjusted. What that means is you can calibrate the device for different surfaces in order to get a more accurate temperature reading. This shiny stainless steel pot is filled with hot water at around 75 degrees centigrade and there's a strip of dark electrical tape on the side. You can see here that the tape emits more heat than the shiny metal surface of the pot. That's because the emissivity of the tape is different to the emissivity of the shiny metal, even though their actual temperatures are the same. 
This phenomenon can make it hard to get accurate readings. Now you can compensate for that problem by choosing an emissivity setting that better matches the material you want to read. I've been using this camera non-stop for the last week and I only found two small issues. One is that the flashlight adjustment is a wee bit quirky. It goes up in funny increments and when I try to store the brightness setting I want, it usually settles on another number slightly above or slightly below what I set. It's like it has its own opinion on what it should be set to. The other little glitch I find is with the startup screen and USB connected screen. There are these little occasional flickers. They go away as soon as the thermal sensor is back on, so it's really a non-issue, but just something I noticed. This is an early production or pre-production unit, so these things may not be there on the retail version. Battery life is acclaimed 4 hours of continuous use. In my test I got just under 5. The original model got 11 hours, which was just mental. But the Pro uses more power to process that higher resolution and smooth frame rate, so 4 to 5 hours is still very impressive. So that's the technical aspects covered. Now what can you actually use this thing for? Well, it's very handy for finding certain electrical faults. This is the charge controller for my solar system and I can see right away that some of the cables are overheating due to too much current. I'm going to have to upgrade to thicker wiring. It's also good for finding damp spots in the ceiling, locating studs and ceiling joists, spotting animals, these kittens couldn't be seen with the naked eye because of all the branches and dry leaves, but the reveal picked them up straight away. Then there's security and home defense. With the higher resolution and frame rate, all of a sudden, this is a very effective tool in spotting unwanted guests snooping around your property. And of course, no thermal review would be complete without the turd test. You know the deal. Your dog does a turd in the dark and you don't want that thing ending up on your shoe the next day, so you've got to find it. Test successful. I find the unseen world of thermal radiation really fascinating and with something like this you can see all sorts of phenomena that you don't normally see. Like drawing with heat mixing hot and cold water and seeing where the small currents go. I made some interesting observations during my time with this, like that some materials like dark plastic bags are completely transparent in the thermal realm. Even some fabrics and clothes are see-through with thermal, giving a sort of x-ray vision. What Seek Thermal have done here is take their original groundbreaking reveal and improve it in almost every way. With the high resolution and super smooth frame rate, this is an amazing thermal camera in a tiny, tough form factor that you can pop in your pocket and literally take anywhere. And with the more advanced features, it's a serious tool for professionals now too. To be honest, I'm blown away by this thing and it hasn't left my pocket all week. When I have to send it back, I'm probably going to cry. It's just that good. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe for next time when I review some third generation military spec night vision. In the meantime, I'll leave you with some images I took with the Reveal Pro.